Hi, I'm Frank, because I have to be. And you're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. Hello, how are you? Mr. I'm fine. Dress up, exclusive interview with Mr. Dress Up. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. Let's begin. You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. And I'm Frank because I have to be. Today's show, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to abandon our regular Frank Talks format and present an interview that was done even before this show existed. It's an interview I did with Mr. Ernie Coombs, known to Canada as Mr. Dressup. At the time, I was a graduate student in the communications department of McGill University, and as part of my thesis, I got to meet with and interview Ernie Coombs. I'm going to read you now the dedication page of my thesis. This study is dedicated to the late Ernie Coombs, also known to Canadians as the character Mr. Dressup, who on August 13, 2001, granted me what became his last recorded interview just four short weeks prior to his final departure that year. His untimely passing has left a great emptiness for those of us who grew up learning from him and for those of us who got to meet with him, even if only for a brief time. Ernie Coombs had a way of touching people of all ages, deep inside each of us, in that special place, where we cherish our most pleasant memories. That place of new possibilities, new learning experiences, that place where we find our connection with the people and world around us. His gift of being able to magically connect with everyone who knew him or of him was also the lesson he taught others to share with one another. When looking to achieve greatness in children's television, it is Mr. Dressup that has set the standard to strive for. This study is dedicated to his legacy, and for anybody who ever set out to achieve a big fat idea. As I just read to you, this is his last official recorded interview, and we're going to present segments from that interview that won't have a very linear flow to it. I only included elements here that I thought would be of interest to listeners, as many of the questions were related to my thesis topic at the time. Nonetheless, I thought that a tribute show to Ernie Coombs' Mr. Dressup would be the right thing to do. The interview begins with a very first question that is, how similar are the character, Mr. Dressup, and the performer, Ernie Coombs? Let's go to that interview now. To the first question, Mm -hmm. as I said, there's... uh there's practically no difference between the character Mr. Dressup and myself, Ernie Coombs. And I started out that way when we first the program was first created, which was then called Butternut Square, and uh, was decided to call the character Mr. Dressup because one of the things I did on uh, on the show was dress up and pretend to be different characters. But uh, basically, it's myself doing things that I like to do and always have liked to do, and. Uh, and uh, could do fairly easily. So you'd say you probably have some of those same value systems or set values? Uh, Yeah, actually, I've always maintained that uh, being Mr. Dressup has probably made me a better person because uh, uh, I think because of of doing the show for so long and uh, there are certain uh, decent values in the show and Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them became embedded in me not that i think i was a very wicked person to be <laughs> but uh, uh having that kind of persona uh on uh, television uh, you know uh, rubs off and onto the person i think uh, i know all of the other other people that uh, are just you know really beastly off camera but uh, it wasn't my way okay now, the next question I have is, who or what exactly owns Mr. Dressup? Do you own the character? Was this something you signed over to the studio? Uh, no, uh, the studio, uh, CBC, created it. Um, as I said, uh, years ago, oh God, it's almost 40 years ago, I guess. Uh, 
that the program uh, Butternut, Butternut Square, Square was created, and uh, they wanted me to play a character on it. And uh, Bruce Atridge, who was the executive producer, and I had a meeting to discuss uh, actually what I would do on the show, because at the time they knew they, uh, they wanted to use me, but they didn't know just what uh, to pass on. Anyway, uh, out of that meeting came the name Mr. Dress Up, and I really can't remember whether I named the name, uh, made up the name, or whether Bruce did. I rather think that he did. Um, anyway, CBC owns the, uh, the character Mr. Dress Up and the uh, program, um, but they're very, very good about letting me do personal appearances and tour and uh, that sort of thing and say, you know, Mr. Dress Up is appearing here <coughs> in person. Um, and uh, one, uh, uh, some time ago, one of uh, the uh, CBC uh, legal people said that when the program ceased to be broadcast on CBC, they would give me the rights to it. Mm -hmm. But it looks like it's going to go on longer than I am, so uh, I don't know what I would do with the rights. <laughs> okay, so you don't necessarily own the rights of Mr. to the character Mr. Dressup, but That's they right. they don't give you a hard time about using the name to promote uh, your own appearances. That's right, yeah. Um, but I'm going to ask you that when you do do certain types of work, say a narration on a series, you're credited as Ernie Coombs, not at all as Mr. Dressup. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I've done... Uh, I'm trying to think of... Uh, well, of course, one example is my, uh, what I'm doing at Sinar. Right. Um, of course, it's assumed that um, everybody in Canada will know who, Mr., uh, who Ernie Coombs is. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I played uh, uh, in the Christmas... Uh, holiday time musicals mm -hmm. in Toronto uh, I was billed as uh, Ernie Coombs TV's Mr. Dress Up which of course is not uh, it's just describing which Ernie Coombs that is right. but uh, there was no problem with that either <clears throat> Okay, but normally if you would do, say, a public appearance uh, for young children as Mr. Dressup, this is something you'd have to work out with the CBC? Uh, yeah, originally in my contract it just stated that uh, any uh, personal appearances I did, I had to get permission uh, from CBC to do, but a long time ago we just didn't bother with that because I'd go on uh, three-week tours, which I would do uh, maybe... 60 or 70 performances wow. and it was a little cumbersome to try to get you know just to get permission or I never really knew who to ask anyway it was just a protection clause in the contract so that if I had done something I think as Mr. Dress Up and disgraced the the name and CBC then they would have some legal uh, recourse. recourse but uh, the, we've always had a very good relationship, you know, and they, they love it when I go on tour because it's uh, promotes the show for the, for the corporation. <coughs> All right.